What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. This is episode number 47. We start today's episode off on the back of our draw away in Denmark against Copenhagen in match day three of the Champions League group stage. It's been a tough start this year for Bielefeld in season four. We're in 10th place in the league. We've already had three defeats in our opening eight games and only one win in our first three in the Champions League as well. It's safe to say there's been nothing consistent about our start to season four and we're hardly high flying like we were at the beginning of last campaign. So for the first game of four in today's episode, FC Conway, I was thinking, right, enough of this. Let's get back on track, shall we? Let's get going and kickstart our season. 23 minutes into the game, if there's one man that isn't letting me down right now, it's Jamie Lewenning. Seventh for the season already in eight games for our number 10. Opens the scoring, gives us the lead, and then 30 minutes in. If you read the title, you were waiting for this and you didn't have to wait long. Florian knew how he's celebrating, but I don't know why he's the man that's getting the credit for this. Oh my goodness. Now we know in this year's FIFA goalkeeper distribution is at times absolutely horrendous. But I don't know what to say about this. This is the most bizarre own goal I've seen in FIFA in a long time. And it comes from 25 yards as Cole try and play their way out from the back. And this header loops over his own goalkeeper and into the unguarded net and you know I can I can see why he's trying to do this because I'm literally about to intercept the ball and I'll have it around 22-23 yards from goal with the goalkeeper out position I can see why he feels the need to win that aerial duel there but what on earth was he trying to do I mean was he trying to head it behind for a corner was he trying to head it back to the goalkeeper so he can pick it up once again but he just put too much on the header was he trying to head out of play? I don't really know why he did that, but we'll take it. It's a bizarre 20 to 25 yard own goal. We'll take the bit of good fortune, but really, despite that bizarre and really fortunate goal, we'd started the game off so well. We were leading by one in that point anyway. Then we were tuning it up. Then we went three it up through Josip Brekelo. And despite Stefan making one decent save in the second half, we'd been the better team. With 17 minutes to go, we were looking for the goal to kill the contest off. Already freeing it up. Florian Newhal rolls through the Croatian and Brekelo bags his brace and makes it four. Yeah, very bizarre own goal. No doubt about that. One of the most bizarre I've seen in this year's FIFA, but it didn't really impact the scoreline. To be well, it impacted the scoreline, but it didn't really impact the result. We were the far better team in this game and after such a tough start to the season I needed this man I needed this we haven't really had like a really really big dominant win so far in the Bundesliga this year this is this is the one I needed to really sort of kickstart our season you know played some lockdown defense was tight all game long Cohen only had one shot in the game it was reasonably comfortable for Stefan other than that we were really solid at the back Darda in that game I often talk about it I, I rarely show defensive highlights because it's <laughs> I talk about it a lot it's so hard to condense video goes down you know to a decent time and, and defensive highlights they're the sort of things which they're not really the most important if you will at times but that was a game where I feel I should have included at least one or two because Dardai played some absolutely flawless defending in that game and was well deserving of the champagne anyway 4-0 to final score great to get the clean sheet and great to get the win as well it, you know it has been a tough start to the season but I really do feel you know when you are struggling for form if you can get a big dominant convincing victory you feel as though you could sort of turn it round, like scraping through of a 1-0 victory or a victory courtesy of an own goal or something, or where you've played poorly, but you've only just got through a bit of luck. They don't really change too much. Yeah, you get the win, yeah, you get the result, but you still don't feel like you can turn things around. But when you win dominantly, when you win convincingly, that's when you think, do you know what? Yeah, I am I am actually pretty decent, to be fair. I just need to do it more consistently. So for the following game, Firth uh, in the DFB Pokal second round, as we know, we've really struggled in this competition since the series began. The closer we've got to a final appearance domestically in a cup is the quarterfinal. That was back in season two when we were knocked out by Munch and Gladbach. Season one and season three, we had early knockouts though to be fair they were against Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund not really going to feel too bad about going out to two of the best teams in Germany and to be fair Munch and Gladbach have been one of our thorns in the side since the series began as well but Firth in the second round they were promoted from the two league last year so back in the Bundesliga for this season after their relegation back in season one we were freeing it up in this game in complete control Ludwig was having a storm to be fair and it was eight minutes to go kind of killing the clock at this point the game was already won the progress was secure but of eight minutes to go we would get Middlestad 
stat. His first goal for the club came in last season as our new backup left back at the start of the campaign, I believe. It's his first goal since joining Armenia Bielfeld. Kind of meaningless, to be fair, but hey, he'll take it and so will we. Final score, 4-0. Back-to-back -back clean sheets, back-to-back 4-0 -back scorelines and back-to-back -back wins domestically and big wins at that as well. Once again, played some really good defence, which I don't get to say very often, of course, as we know. So very pleased with the back-to-back -back wins here especially of a weaker side in the second round. Unfortunately, our reward for getting through the second round is a trip to our bogey team at Augsburg. And I'm just like, come on, man. Seriously, we do not get the luck in the cup draws in this series, do we, man? So, so frustrating. We're up to seventh after the big win against Cologne there. So, for the first time, we're knocking on door for a European play since the season began. So, delighted with that because Lord knows we needed a big win and we got it there. But Augsburg, despite the tough starts of the season in the relegation zone right now, we did, of course, beat them 3-2, the turnaround victory. I still think that was probably our first win against them in the entire series so far they they are just such a massive bogey team and they are the bogey team of this series I mean I struggle against them so much and you know the luck in the cup draws we haven't got it yet season one we had Dortmund in the second round unsurprisingly we were knocked out season two got to the quarters and then had much and glad back our series rivals well primary series rivals and we were knocked out in the last eight last season second round Bayern Munich. I mean, you know, we just don't get the luck in the DFB Pokal Cup draws, but now Augsburg away. We will be favourites, but we know how tough it is to win there. We haven't won there since the series began, so whilst we'll be favourites, we probably won't feel like it. It's going to be a tough, tough clash against our bogey team. So, third game of today's episode, Wolfsburg at home, and I was thinking, okay, alright, back-to-back wins, back-to-back -back clean sheets, but now taking on the league leads in this game. Can we keep the run going? Can we get a good, consistent, domestic run of form for the first time this season. Well, starting the game off, we had the first chance, did a great save by Stefan, kept it gold, but Wolfsburg really looking dangerous in the early stages. This is why they're top, and they get the opener as well. Kevin Volland, every time I face him in FIFA career mode, always has a stormer against me. It's rarely a game where I'll keep him quiet. He might not have scored the first goal, but he did get the assist. Rolling it through, Philippe would have finished from close range over a goal down against Wolfsburg, and at this point I was thinking, consistency? Never heard of it. Don't know how you get it. I really don't. We're a goal down, but to be fair against the league leaders, wasn't too surprising. Having said that, whilst we look shaky defensively, we look good when going forward, and that's why I was six minutes to go before the break. I wasn't surprised to see this. Jamie Llewellyn rolled through one on one, and if there is one man that's been consistent in this Bielefeld team so far this season, it is our number 10. Goal number 9, I think it is for the season now. 8 or 9 for Jamie Llewellyn, and another one for the guy who last season had a great chance to win the golden boot before his injury. Gets us our level makes it 1-1 and then in stoppage time oh my goodness Castells with the save of the season surely gives Wolfsburg a point until he didn't oh my word what do we talk about so often late goals in FIFA so so common as we come from behind to win with the final touch of the game corner whipped into the middle and Robin Hack's first league goal of the season gives us the three points I talked about him briefly in the last episode I've struggled with him this season I don't really know why he's one of our best offensive players in this team but for some reason this year I've really struggled. That's only his second goal all season in all competitions and first in the league. But hey, what a time to get his first league goal. Corner whipped into the middle and headed in past Castells. It was one of those moments where like you kind of you kind of feel sorry for the AI goalkeeper, which is a bit nerdy, but I know it's true. Because Castells made this incredible save, save of the season, to surely give Wolfsburg a point. But we had one final chance from that corner. And we ended up scoring from it as well. That incredible save counted for literally nothing in the end. It was a save of the season, man, from close range. Somehow blocking the Lewelling effort from about six yards out. But thankfully, we did find that breakthrough. So three wins in a row in the domestic competitions for Armenia Bielfeld. But this was big. Fourth and final game of today's episode. Champions League group stage. And it is Copenhagen. So far, the only team in the group without a win. And in Denmark, we were held to a 2-2 draw. And heading into this game with PSG to come and then Fenerbahce away in the final group game in Turkey. Well, let's just say I needed to win this one here and extend our winning run to four in all competitions for the first time this season. It was a tight beginning. Both teams had looked well. But with three minutes to go before the break, oh, I will take it. Shot well saved. 
But Benjamin Henrik's the first to react. And what's that saying? I often say, if you're going to score your first goal of your club, make it a memorable one. Well, how about a 25-yard chip? Yep, absolutely perfectly way to goalkeeper. Get to touch, can only palm it into his own net though. And Bielfeld had the lead courtesy of the former Leipzig fullback. Signed on deadline day in the summer and a brilliant chip. Gives him his first goal for his new club and our breakthrough against Copenhagen. In the second half, the Danes continued to attack. A couple of brilliant saves by the legs of Zach Steffen kept it at 1 0, though. He's got the saves with feet trait. Now, I don't often sign goalkeepers that have that because it's a very unorthodox way of saving shots. I remember there was like one or two years, many years ago now, where David De Gea went through a phase where he literally tried to save every single shot with his boots. It is very unorthodox, but sometimes it comes in handy, like for that moment there. Back to back saves, great double stop by the American. American there and both coming with each leg we still led by a goal we we're up by one but it was a really nervy game but in stoppage time as I look for the dagger we got it and who was the man that provided it oh welcome back Messiah Okugawa first game back in seven months after the ACL what does he do? Scores the dagger with the weaker right boot. We've missed him. We've missed him big time. We didn't miss him as much towards the back end of last season because Brecolo was just so good. But to start this season off, we've missed his presence. And in his first start since the seven-month injury, he turns to be the guy that kills Copenhagen off. Yep, the dagger provided by Messiah. 2-0 the final score and a win over Copenhagen. And our second of the group, both coming at the Shuka Arena. And a big, much-needed one as well. Four straight wins in all competitions. Best run of the season. We go four clear of Fenerbahce as well. And that does mean beat PSG on match day five. Easier said than done, of course. And we'll guarantee qualification against Spare. We're into the European places for the first time in the Bundesliga this season as well. And I don't want to jinx things, but it does seem like after a tough start, Bielfeld might well be back to their best. But that will end today's episode of the Bundesliga Karuma, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Bundesliga Karuma featuring PSG and Dortmund very soon.